Welcome to The Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to The Weekly Option. This is episode 95 on January 4th, 2020. Happy New Year. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we will cover trades from last week on Diamond Offshore Drilling, PayPal Holdings, and Lowe's Companies Incorporated, and we discuss three new trades on CEL SEI Corporation, the S&P Oil and Gas uh, E&P ETF, and JD.com. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here on the show or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. And I've also created a short video series to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. Now, there was so much news on the domestic and international front this week, the markets actually closed slightly lower than last week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 10 points week over week, closing at 28,634 points, and the S&P 500 Index lost 5 points, closing at 3,234 points this week. Now, the topic of the week is sponsored each week by the Option Studio, Studio, If you want to learn to trade options without any calculus and confusing language, visit the website to learn more about the online course. Visit www.theoptionstudio.com for more information. Now, the topic of the week this week is real the real financial cost of trading options. So most of the time on this show, I speak in terms of option prices, but I don't talk actual dollars received and uh, extended. So each option, just to, just as a refresher, each stock option that you trade is it represents 100 shares of stock. So that's basic, basic, basic options education um, that you guys would have learned. So if we trade a spread, however, if we trade a spread uh, that is one dollar wide, meaning this, there's one dollar difference between the two strikes. That means it represents $100. So $1 times 100 shares is $100. If we trade a 50 cent wide spread, so let's say it's the 25 25 half call spread, the difference between the strikes there is 50 cents. So that means that the spread itself is worth $50. So if you sell a naked or unhedged call option, right? If I just go out and sell a call, um, there's unlimited upside because in theory, a call option can go as high, it can go all the way to infinity. So that's the reason why most brokerages will require you to have at least $100,000 in your account to be able to margin, to to be able to hold on to uh, or sustain any possible financial losses as that stock runs higher, right? Um, If you sell a spread, the most that is at risk is the difference between the two strikes because you're always buying one option and selling one option. That's like buying stock at one price and selling stock at another. That's what you're doing in theory. So the most that a spread could ever be worth is the difference between those two strikes. So the brokerage account only requires an amount of margin equal to your maximum risk. Now this is really important to understand because most of the spreads that I cover on this show are only 50 cents or $1 wide. That means that for those of you who have a small margin account, like let's say you have a a two thousand um, dollar a two thousand uh, dollar uh, option trading account, uh, a one thousand dollar option trading account, uh, and there are some brokerages that allow you to have smaller accounts um, and still allow you to trade options. Some of the big boy brokerages, if you've got an account at Merrill or or Goldman or something like that, you're not going to be able to trade options. Um, without having a large uh, a large account balance. But to be honest, you're not going to have an account at those brokerages without having a lot of money too. Uh, but that all being said, there are brokerages out there that allow you to trade with a smaller account. So if you, I, I received an email this week um, 
and I'll respond to that email soon. Uh, sorry for the delay, but I received an email where someone mentioned that they had a smaller brokerage account. And, you know, yes, yeah, sometimes trading, say, a covered call position will require more capital. Uh, but because you're buying the stock as well, and that's the reason why you're able to sell that call option without having a $100,000 account balance is because you actually own the stock to deliver against that option if the option goes in the money, if the option you sold went in the money. But that's a whole nother story. At the end of the day, um, if you have a smaller account, spread trading is great for you because your margin will equal the amount of money, will basically equal the difference between those those uh, those strikes. So um, I'm going to add, uh, going forward, I'm gonna add uh, a line in each of my new trades that talks about the actual dollar terms. I normally just speak in terms of op option prices and uh, that just comes from years of trading options. I don't think a whole lot about actual dollars, uh, but it all gets back to real dollars and so I'll make sure that going forward, I add real dollar prices to this podcast, but just wanna make sure you guys understand this. This is part of understanding risk. I always harp on how important it is to act to understand the actual risk of your trades, um, not, not just how much you might make in the market, but how much you could also lose. And if I understand how much I can lose, I know how to properly size the trade. A lot of traders, uh, professional and uh, retail uh, traders, make up uh, or they make huge mistakes because they enter these trades based on what they could make rather than what they could lose. So learning how to size your trades falls under money management, and there just isn't a, there, there's not a lot of resources out there to help you understand risk. So if there's anything that I want to be, I want to be a resource that harps on the importance of understanding risk. And part of that is just understanding in real dollars, the uh, value of your trades. So uh, we're going to get into the trade review this week. That's the that's it for the topic of the week. Um, I'm going to give the trade review as I normally would. But the three new trades that I uh, mentioned uh, going forward, will include the real dollar terms so that you guys can actually follow along and and better understand what's going on if you're because i know a lot of you are uh, some of you are actually trading a lot of you are paper trading right now and you need to understand the real dollar terms or real dollar amounts uh behind these trades so let's get into the covered call from last week and honestly this was not a great week of trading uh because uh, let's see, the market was down slightly, and uh, last week I looked at selling a put and buying a call option. So right off the bat, you know that if I sold a put spread and the market went down, then I most likely lost money on that put spread. And if I bought a call option and the market went down, I most likely lost money on that call option. So there are uh, examples where that changes, um, but by and large, those are... Those are things that those are themes that you'll see play out in your own portfolio. So we'll start off with diamond offshore drilling symbol D as in Delta, O as in Oscar. Uh, when we looked at this trade last week, the stock was trading for six dollars and seventy-seven cents per share. I looked at buying that stock and selling the January seven call option uh, at sixty-four cents, uh, which could yield a maximum possible return of twelve point eight five percent in three weeks. Well, uh, oil prices obviously had a nice little pop this week. Energy in general had a nice pop uh, based on some of the geopolitical news that happened with regards to Iran. So uh, Diamond Offshore stock actually gained 86 cents per share, ending this week at $7.63 per share. The January 7 call we sold can now be repurchased for roughly 65 cents, which will be a loss of just a penny. But there's zero possibility. You guys who have been listening to the show, you know, you don't sell, you don't exit this trade. This trade worked and will lead to a 12.85% return when the stock gets assigned for $7 per share. So there are no adjustments that are needed here. As long as the stock remains above $7 per share, this trade is a winner. Uh, you'll keep the money that you sold that call option for and collect the little bit of difference between 677 and $7, you're selling the stock ultimately at 
So you'll you'll keep that 23 cents, right? So between the 23 cents that you receive from the option and the 64 cents you receive, I'm sorry, the 23 cents you receive because of the difference of where you own stock and where you'll be selling it and the 64 cents you receive from the option, that's a total of 87 cents that you're gonna re receive on a cash outlay of under $700. So that's where the 12.85% return comes from. And uh, we're two weeks away from expiration, so as long as stock stays above $7, this was a nice and quick uh, short-term return. All right, now let's get into the credit spread from last week. We looked at PayPal Holdings, symbol P as in Papa, Y as in Yankee, P as in Papa, L as in Lima. Stock at the time was trading for $109.40 per share. I looked at selling the January 109-108 put spread at $0.38, cents, which can yield a maximum possible loss of $0.62 cents per spread. So PayPal stock fell $0.64 cents this week, closing at $108.76 per share. The out-of-the-money put spread we sold is currently at the money. So one of the strikes is in the money, the other is out of the money. We can pay $0.51 cents to close this trade, which will lead to a $0.13 cent loss per spread. Now, I like selling call spreads against put spreads in general. That turns it into what's called an iron condor. Now, I, I really like doing this, especially if we lose a little bit of money on the initial trade. So I'm looking at selling the January 110, 111 call spread at $0.33 cents per spread. This increases the overall, like the total amount of options uh, or the total amount of premium that we've sold on options for this month for PayPal, it, it add, that, that premium now adds up to $0.71 cents when combining what we're receiving for the put spread and the call spread because we received $0.38 cents for selling the put spread and we'll receive $0.33 cents for selling the call spread, right? So that means this, this $1 spread we've now collected $0.71 cents on and that puts our maximum amount at risk reduces it down to 29 cents, right? So you have $1 minus 71 cents, that's 29 cents per spread, so that's what's at risk. So if we don't sell the call spread you, and you maintain your original position, your maximum loss, right, your maximum additional loss, um, because the spread is now worth 51 cents, you could still lose another 49 cents. So if you sell that call spread against this, we've created a situation where we increase our profit if stock finishes between $109 and $110 per share in two weeks. This is only only two weeks left in this trade. So if it finishes between $109 and $110, then we get to keep that $0.71. Cents. And as we know from the topic of the week, $0.71 cents represents $71 per spread. And what happens is we've actually lowered our maximum possible loss from $0.62 cents per spread, which was our original, down to $0.29 cents per spread. So um, if we lose, if we lose on one of those spreads, all the most that we could actually lose on this is $0.29 cents or $29 per spread. So remember, our goal in understanding risk is always to either lock in profit uh, or to limit risk. So by selling, by changing, by selling another call spread again or selling a call spread against this put spread, not only do I cover some of the losses that I took this week, but... I totally change my risk, my maximum risk scenario, even if I've shortened the range, I've created a smaller dollar range where I'm going to profit, but that's okay because I'm, I'm, I'm buffering the loss and making sure that, that my losses are kept to a minimum. So that's it for that trade. Final trade from last week is going to be a debit spread. We looked at Lowe's company. Uh, the Lowe's company is incorporated, symbol L-O-W, L as in Lima, O as in Oscar, W as in Whiskey. Uh, last week when we looked at the trade, the stock was trading for $120.23 per share, and I bought the January 119-120 call spread and paid $0.66 cents per spread. That can give me a maximum gain of $0.34 cents, or a roughly $51. Uh, percent return in three weeks on my money. So low stock fell 63 cents per share, closing at $119.60. Uh, so the in the money call spread we bought is now at the money, meaning one of the strikes is in the money, one is out of the money. 
and it it's the call spread is actually trading uh, for a loss of 16 cents per spread or $16 in real terms. So when I look at the chart for this company, I'm still bullish this stock and I like owning this call spread. However, we have fallen below our break even point, our break even point um, uh, last week. So because of that, um, you have some decisions to make. Now, before, before I go and make any adjustments to this trade, um, I'm looking at letting another day or two of stock trading pass because I want more information. And each additional day that passes gives me more indication, like more information. Hope what I'm looking for is a clear indication on the direction of this stock trade. And right now where prices are, it traded down, I believe, to the 20 or the 50 day moving average. And each time it's done this before, it popped back up. So I actually like where stock is right now. Um, I don't want to close this trade, but if it falls through, uh, then I'm going to go ahead and find another solution for this trade. So now that's I, I make that sort of decision because of my level of risk tolerance. I fully understand how much is at risk and I'm OK with it. I was OK with it when I entered the trade. So I don't have to make any uh, rash sort of decisions right now. So the main thing that you have to learn is what is your actual risk tolerance and what is your your risk perspective overall? Because um, you could say, hey, this trade passed our break even point and you would have exited the trade earlier in the week because that's the rule. If it gets near your, ex your break even, you exit. Right. Um, but I am open to being a little bit crazy and letting stock uh, see uh, waiting to see if I'm going to make my money back on this trade uh, and then some not really make my money back, but really see this trade finish in the money, which would allow me to 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 make a 51 percent return. And we're not that far from that right now. So overall, if you understand risk, you can better size your trades and trade a, a, a volume that makes sense for the size of your account and your risk tolerance. So that's it on last week's trade review. We have two weeks until trading expiration for the month of January. Can you believe that? I mean, with, with it already being a new month, we're only two weeks away from January expiration. So most likely next week will be our last week looking at January trades. And if they are too um, bad, we actually might, and most likely actually with one week left, we'll probably go ahead and dive into February trades. So that makes it that means that this week will likely be our last uh, week of January options. So as usual, we're going to start off with the covered call. Looking at a company I hadn't seen before called CELSCI Corporation. Stock symbol is CVM. C as in Charlie, V as in Victor, M as in Mike. The stock actually finished the week trading for $9.02 per share. And I'm looking at buying that stock and selling the January 10 call at $1.00. That can yield a 21.95, almost a 22% return in two weeks uh, on my capital. So you enter this trade by buying CVM stock for $9.02 and then selling the January 10 call at $1. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $10 per share and the break-even price is $8.02 per share. The stock purchase, of course, re require $902 of capital, and you would collect $100 for selling the option. Now, the credit spread for this week, we're looking at the S&P Oil and Gas Exploration and Production ETF, symbol XOP. X is in X-Ray, O is in Oscar, P is in Papa. Uh, stock ended the week for uh, trading at $24.03 per share. I'm looking at selling the January 24 23 half put spread and collecting 19 cents uh, with a maximum possible loss of 31 cents per spread. And you enter this trade by selling the January 24 put at 56 cents and buying concurrently buying the January 23 half put for 37 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $24 per share at expiration. The break-even price is $23.81. And in real dollar terms, you would receive $19 per spread you sell and have $31 per spread at risk. 
And then our final trade on the week is our debit spread. We're looking at JD.com, symbol J as in Juliet, D as in Delta. Uh, stock in at the week at $37.99 per share. I'm looking at buying the January 37, 37 half call spread for $0.34 cents per spread, which can yield, give us a maximum gain of $0.16 cents or 47% return in two weeks. Now, you enter this trade by buying the January 37 call for $1.53 and concurrently selling the January 37 half call at $1.19. This is a debit spread because ultimately we are buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $37.50 per share. The break even price on this spread is $37.34. So you'll pay $34 in all to enter this position, to enter this spread, and that is your maximum your maximum risk um, and your maximum gain of course is sixteen dollars per spread so that's it for this week's uh new trades and trade review thank you guys so much for listening i do have some emails that i need to reply to but thank you so much i, I receive and read all of them personally and uh you guys are awesome i mean it nothing more uh unnatural than speaking to my computer through a microphone. <laughs> it takes a lot of getting used to, um, but I love the fact that you guys email me and ask questions and let me know that you listen. I obviously can see how many people listen to the show and that's been growing too. If you have any friends that are learning option trading or that want to learn more about option trading in general, uh, I appreciate you sharing the show with them. And I am very excited about this upcoming year. 2020 is going to be amazing. There's a lot that's coming out for you guys as well as far as free course material and additional information. So I'll be sharing that soon. Thank you so much for listening. Go out there and have a great weekend. And of course, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.